Cars has some pretty good moments that even make us forget that its criminals are on the par with Marvel's criminals, being a great threat to the whole world, and they don't even have hands. Today I'm going to introduce you to all the crimes of these terrorist and liar cars, and tell you how much they pay for all their actions. To begin with, we have one of the most unexpected and evil villains of the Cars universe, the one and only Sir Miles Axelrod from Cars 2. After watching the first Cars movie, we were all eager to see more, but we would never have guessed that instead of being about simple races, we were going to have a plot of spies and worldwide conspiracies to manipulate cars. With such a crazy plot, there had to be a mastermind behind all the crimes, and that's how we got Sir Miles Axelrod, who is the classic villain who prefers to manipulate before getting into action. All of Miles Axelrod's plans are aimed at making cars hate alternative fuel, this in order to get rich. And he does it by staging a whole soap opera which leaves him as a hero. Sir Miles Axelrod makes a conspiracy crime, but it isn't just any kind of conspiracy. It is one that aims to affect the entire world population, playing with something as important in the world of cars as fuel, which could be translated to our world like water or food. And for threatening the whole world, he would undoubtedly get a life sentence. Moreover, he doesn't stop there, as Sir Miles Axelrod accomplishes quite a few goals of his elaborate and evil plan. He fooled the many cars with his inspirational story about how he got to survive on his alternative fuel. He even lied to everyone, blaming Mater in front of everyone for spilling oil. So not only does he commit one fraud after another, it is also a crime of defamation against Mater, for which he would have to receive 50 years in prison and a restraining order. In addition, part of his plan is to sabotage the cars that compete in the races. Using special cameras, he can destroy the engines of the cars, and there would come into play several fatal crimes. We could consider it as a crime of mutilation, if we think that the engine is like the heart of the cars. But we have cars like Guido, who can quickly take cars to the pits and change the tires as if nothing. Then, legally, the engines couldn't be considered as something as vital as an organ, because they are replaceable without causing any major changes in the life of the cars. If you don't believe me, watch the Cars movies again to see how McQueen, among many other cars, changed their tires bodywork, engines, and blah blah blah. No way we could change our arms or legs like that. But what crime is he committing here? Well, first of all, it'll be an attempt of mass murder, because the cameras are used in more than one car, in different parts of the whole world, and from what we saw, it really could end the lives of the competitors by causing so many crashes and accidents, and I will add mass torture, because Sir Miles Axelrod causes all that trouble to accomplish his cruel and evil goals. And for murder and mass torture, Miles Axelrod would receive a life sentence, and ironically, also a death sentence. And after what I just said, you'd think, does this get countered? Well, no, that's how the laws work. And to top it off, he's also a traitor. The Sir part in his name is a title that only those who swear allegiance to the British Empire receive. And as we saw at the end of the movie, the Queen realizes that. And for his crime of high treason, Miles Axelrod would receive a life sentence. And so, the self-made liar puts together a list with six crimes of very questionable morals. Conspiracy on a grand scale, fraud, defamation, attempted mass murder, mass torture, high treason, and with a long sentence of three life sentences, a death sentence, 50 years in prison, and a restraining order. So he has plenty of time to think about his crimes. But of course, such a terrible villain doesn't work alone, and for that, he had his henchman, the Professor Zundap, also from Cars 2. Unlike his boss, the professor is a criminal who gets his hands dirty. 
or, well, tires. From the beginning, it is made that this guy is a full-fledged villain, who is not afraid to explain his evil plans, and his voice doesn't tremble to stop his enemies. In his first appearance and confrontation with McMissile, he's in a kind of oil plant, trafficking weapons, and that's a crime that is paid with 20 years in prison. And just like his boss, the professor is part of a worldwide conspiracy, and that's straight up a life sentence. He is also the first car killer in the Cars universe, as we see him ordering a murder, just to test out his new weapons. Kill him. And that's first degree murder, which would get him a life sentence. He's Mater's natural nemesis. It is not in vain that he's considered an antagonist. As the film progresses, he forms a direct enmity with a Tau truck, to the point of trying to send a missile against him. And although the short range fortunately saved Mater and McQueen to prevent their deaths, it is still an attempted murder in the first degree, which adds another life sentence to the professor. And he's also a very bad driver, because as soon as he gets caught trying to destroy Mater, he immediately jumps out of the window and starts racing like an angry horse, causing accidents all over the place, putting in risk the life of many civilians. All these actions would be considered reckless driving, which can be sentenced with a $1,000 fine, plus all the damages that he caused in the city. And for murder, he became a terrorist, in a movie for the whole family. Because the professor's plans affect a lot of countries throughout the film, he doesn't mind causing damage by shooting missiles. And that's a pretty serious crime of terrorism. And for that, he would get a death sentence. And so, the car killer puts together a total of seven crimes, which make him a big threat. Weapon trafficking, large-scale conspiracy, murder in the first degree, coercion, attempted first degree murder, reckless driving, terrorist. He became a threat that should never get out of prison, and he puts together a total sentence of three life sentences, one death sentence, and 25 more years in prison, with a fine of $1,000 plus damages. I bet you didn't think that Jackson Storm would also enter the criminal zone. We saw him in Cars 3. The lastest villain Cars gave us isn't spared from paying for his crimes either, as this modern race car is the most thuggish criminal of them all. He's a real bully, and that can't go unnoticed, as Jackson crosses the line about being an irritating competitor to becoming a bully. All the comments he makes against McQueen really get to affect our favorite race car. All those comments turn into emotional abuse, which cause serious problems in Lighten, to the point of retiring from his job, and that gives him a 5-year sentence plus $320,000 he must pay to McQueen. But he doesn't stop there, as he also approaches Cruz Ramirez and McQueen on many occasions, and this he does just to taunt and provoke them. And because he only approaches McQueen's team, his attitude becomes harassment, which would give him a 4-year sentence and a restraining order for McQueen and Cruz Ramirez. We couldn't really count his enhancements as outright cheating, since by that point in cars, the use of technology is well valid and allowed. But Jackson insists on continuing to use foul play, and just as he did with McQueen, he targets Cruz for further psychological abuse, going so far as to go back in the race just to harass her. And that's committing the same crime of emotional abuse again, which again adds 5 years and $320,000 to his sentence. And so, the bully only gets to commit two crimes, emotional abuse, extreme harassment, both of which carry quite a big weight, as he would have a 14-year sentence with a $640,000 fine and two restraining orders. Although that shouldn't be a problem for a racer who lives quite luxuriously. And finally we have Chick Hicks, the one who really didn't do anything wrong. Despite what many would think, Chick just has a bit of an insufferable attitude at times. 
But really, everything is good with him. The times he pushed the rivals against the wall or caused the fatal accidents aren't considered a crime, as all these actions happen all the time in the racing world and would only be a type of unsportsmanlike conduct, which only takes away from his job or opportunities to participate in other races. That's why Chick Hicks then went into the world of broadcast, because he knew he was going to get kicked out of racing for all this attitude. And you, what do you think of all these car criminals? Do you know any other that we didn't mention?